In this lesson, we're going to look at the Manchurian Crisis of 1931, when Imperial Japan invaded the province of Manchuria in China. And we're going to ask, how did the League deal with this aggressive action? Let's have a little look at some Japanese history very briefly. For almost a thousand years, Japan had been ruled by the shoguns, who were hereditary military dictators. There was an emperor, but real power lay with the shoguns. And the shoguns effectively cut off Japan from outside contact with the world. So Japan was very isolated. In 1853, this gentleman you can see in the black and white photograph, Commodore Perry, he was leader of an American expedition, the aim of which was to force Japan to open up to trade. This was a successful expedition. Essentially, Perry sailed four gunboats towards the, past, sorry, <laughs> towards the capital Edo and essentially threatened the Japanese with opening fire if they didn't accept the opening up of Japan. And this was ultimately successful. The Japanese recognised that Commodore Perry and the West had developed advanced military technology which they couldn't deal with. Here's a contemporary Japanese woodblock illustrating, I think, Commodore Perry's in the middle there. And so what, what happened next is that Japan made huge and very successful efforts to change its economy, its infrastructure and so on along Western lines. Use what's been used against you and develop that strength. So. In 1868, the old shogun, remember the shoguns had kept Japan isolated, they're kicked out and the emperor is restored in something called the Meiji Restoration and the economy, the education, the industry of Japan, these are developed along the lines of Western models. So Japan, as a consequence, becomes an industrialised country. Japan shows its new power in the defeat of a Western power, in the defeat of Russia. In 1905, in the Russian-Japanese War, two-thirds of the Russian fleet was sunk at the Battle of Tsushima. The Japanese had modern steamships which they communicated effectively using new wireless technology. And so the Russians suffered a defeat at the hands of this new Asian power. And Japan expected equality after this with those Western empires. It wanted its own empire. After all, Britain, France, uh, the Dutch, they had large empires within Asia, and Japan would like its own Asian empire. It needed raw materials for its manufacturing, for its industry. Japan was very poor in terms of raw materials like coal, oil, Iron, these things that you need in a manufacturing economy, Japan was very short of them, so it wanted to conquer or colonize foreign territories to gain access to supplies of raw materials. The Western powers now began to see Japan as something of, of a threat. After all, the Western powers had interests in Asia, many of them had colonies in Asia, and Japan now as a potential rival with the power to back itself up. Japan did actually support the Allies in World War I. It supported Britain, France, Russia and the United States. But very much like Italy, as we'll see later, Japan was disappointed with what it got out of the Versailles Treaty. It expected more land and more territories. It was disappointed with this. Let's have a little look at the government of Japan leading up to the invasion of Manchuria. During the 1920s, there was a civilian, a democratic government in Japan. However, the army held the real power. They kind of bossed the civilian government around and told them what to do. The army held the real power in Japan. And in September of 1931, the army demonstrated this in something called the Mukden incident. Essentially, the Japanese army claimed that its railways and its possessions in Manchuria were under threat and it needed to march into Manchuria to restore order. This was essentially an excuse for an invasion of Manchuria, which was part of China. So in 1931, Japan invaded Manchuria, a large province of China. It's after raw materials, essentially, within 
Manchuria, and also a market for Japanese goods. So what did the League of Nations do? Was collective security going to work? Were the countries of the League of Nations going to act together and get this aggress aggressive action, make it reverse? Were they, they going to force Japan out of Manchuria? Bit of a problem, both China and Japan are members of the League of Nations, so what's the League going to do? This map is very helpful here, just, just, just to see where things are. So Korea had previously been colonised in 1911-1912, and Japan invaded Manchuria, as you can see, in 1931. Manchuria, Manchukuo in Japanese, Manju, I believe, in Korean. So what did the League do? It's a picture of some Japanese uh, troops on a troop ship there. Did it use economic sanctions? That remember, it, it could use uh, the force of world opinion. It could use economic sanctions. It could use military force. Did it? Did the league do those things? Well, this is what the league actually did. It set up something called the Lytton Committee, led by Lord Lytton of Great Britain. Now, this committee had to make its way to Manchuria, which obviously took a long time. So they had to travel all the way from Western Europe to Manchuria. Um, it took the committee a long time to make its report, so there are, there are, clearly there are some inefficiencies in the League here. It takes a very long time for the Lytton Committee to make its report, by which time the Japanese have effectively completed their conquest of Manchuria. So, what did the Lytton Committee report say? The Lytton report said Japan should leave Manchuria, but did it back this up with any threats? No, there was no trade ban, nor was there a threat of military force. So how did Japan respond to the League of Nations report saying, look, you should leave Manchuria? Well, Ma they did leave something, and that was the League of Nations. This is Matsuoka in a very dramatic moment in the League of Nations in 1933. Basically, Matsuoka says Japan finds it impossible to accept the report. This is a life or death thing for us. You know, you've got your empires, we are the new empire in the East, we're going to bring order and civilization in the East. And Matsuoka does make a fair point, the slight double standards here in the great powers of Britain and France, when they already have foreign empires which they've colonized previously. So basically, Japan leaves the League of Nations. Why was the League of Nations so weak, so indecisive in dealing with a case of aggression between two members of the League of Nations? You know, why didn't it deal with Japan's invasion of Manchuria? Well, missing powers are a factor. The USSR wasn't a League member. The USSR would certainly have opposed Japan's invasion of Manchuria quite strongly. In fact, Russia had previously had a claim on Manchuria and the Japanese invasion of Manchuria is very close to Russian strategic interests, but the USSR wasn't a member of the League, so a potential ally in opposing Japan was absent. Probably even more important, the United States was not a member of the League because of its policy of isolationism, and this would mean that any economic sanctions that Britain and France and the League powers did wouldn't be effective because the USA could simply fill the trade gap. What is also going on is the Great Depression. And so any ban on trade with Japan is going to really hurt the economies of Britain and France and the other major powers at a time when they really, they've got a lot of problems at home with the Depression. So not only are economic sanctions going to hurt the powers themselves, the USA would simply fill in the gap. So that's not going to make them effective. The USA could simply fill the trade gap. There were also some sympathetic powers who were watching what was happening in Manchuria with great interest. This is a picture of Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator of Italy. Uh, Germany, as well, was looking on curiously. Remember, it wanted to reverse some of the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Italy wanted a foreign empire, so it's very curious to see what's going to happen here. Germany as well. Could Japan get away with it? So Italy and Germany looking on curiously, seeing how this is going to play out. Why didn't Britain and France take a more concerted action? Why weren't they stronger? And remember Britain and France, they are the principally the strongest members of the League. Britain's worried militarily, it's not powerful enough that its navy couldn't take on the Japanese. It doesn't want to start a war. It's also worried, you know, it can't take on a war on two fronts, it's going to. Its big priority is looking after its empire, not fighting the Japanese, who have got, who demonstrated they've got a modern and an efficient navy. 
it is worried if it does take on the Japanese, can it defend its East Asian and Southeast Asian and South Asian colonies, India, Singapore and Hong Kong. It doesn't want to risk its East Asian colonies. And like we said, it traded a lot with Japan and that was important, especially during the Great Depression. Could it afford to lose that trade with Japan? The French, their principal concern from historical reasons is they were mostly worried about Germany. So they didn't want to commit foreign troops to a very far away conflict in an area. Manchuria was not really of any strategic interest to either Britain or France. So why would they spend money and potentially lose lives fighting Japan over this issue? So to summarize, the powers were weak. They were worried they were focusing on the Great Depression. Um, France was more worried about Germany. Britain was worried about protecting its empire. Didn't want to get involved in a war with Japan. Important powers, the USA wasn't a member of the League and could simply have filled any trade gap. The USSR wasn't a member of the League and so a potential ally against Japan was lost there. The depression we've mentioned, again, countries, they're very wary about doing economic sanctions that are going to hurt them at home. And this is the first time really they've dealt with a very aggressive power which simply ignores what the League is saying. And the other factors in, in collective security the League wasn't prepared to do them.